Today we're going to be doing a rear press-in wheel bearing on a 2009 Ford Escape. It's going to be a little different today, so we're going to be using an on-car wheel bearing press. First we'll go over some of the tools you're going to need for this. So right here, there's my on-car wheel bearing press. I've used it a handful of times, just from OEM tools. There's the part number, 37342. Like I said, I've only used it a handful of times. So far, it's been great. I have no issues with it. Um, you're gonna need that. I have a ball joint kit here, just for some extra uh, adapters and stuff for pressing it in and out. Uh, you're gonna need a couple sets of snap ring pliers, a pair of needle nose, a hammer, a punch, couple screwdrivers, maybe a pick, uh, obviously a torque wrench, a pry bar. You're gonna want an inch and a quarter and an inch and a sixteenth uh, wrench just for uh, running the uh, bearing press in and out. Obviously you're gonna need some brake clean, a hub puller, an impact gun, and a means of picking the vehicle up off the ground. Yep. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, picking the vehicle up. We've got the vehicle picked up. We're on a set of jack stands right now, uh, safety. Um, I might have forgot a couple various hand tools like the 19 millimeter socket we're going to use to remove the wheel. We're going to take that off first since it's on a jack stand. We'll go from there. Alright, now that our tire's off, i got to get the drum off. I've had these off kind of recently, so they should come off pretty good. Get our drum. Oh, here's our brake clean. This where this is going to come into play. I'm going to clean everything down. You don't want to breathe all this in. Um, say it's only cancerous in the state of California or something like that, but either way, you want to clean it down. All right. So I guess I could have put a drain pan under it, but that'll be all right. Well, anyways. Um, it doesn't hurt to check all of your brake linings and stuff. You want to make sure you don't have any rotted out springs or really low brake linings, almost metal to metal. That could ruin your drum. Also, you want to make sure that they're wearing evenly so you know they're properly adjusted. Uh, inside of here actually looks very surprisingly clean. So that's good. All right, carrying on. Uh, I don't even know why I bother trying to tell you guys what tools you're going to need to do this because every time I do something like this I always wind up finding more tools than I forgot to mention so either way uh, first things first before you uh, pull this hub out you're going to have to take the nut off the back side uh, to do that I got a pry bar running through the uh, studs here to hold pressure on it to take it off get on my creeper here all right so this is the nut back here a 32 millimeter and uh, I sprayed it down some but we're gonna take that off and we'll go from there all right so just got our nut off of here uh, right here you're gonna be looking at the I believe they call it a toner ring um, your wheel speed sensors up here basically as this little gear looking thing like I said I think it's a toner ring it's a technical term for it uh, passes by that speed sensor that which has a magnet in it it's uh that's what tells you how fast you're going you're gonna have to get this toner ring off the back as well you want to be very careful not to damage it in any way shape or form otherwise you'll probably get an abs light we'll probably put a wheel speed sensor in it and then wonder why it is not fixed yet and it still has that code and they'll come to your shop and tell you that they put a wheel speed sensor in it and it still isn't working and they've seen a youtube video and that's what they said it was but yeah, so now we're going to wiggle this off of here. Like I said, I'm uh, probably going to have to pry it off some. But don't want to get too crazy. Otherwise, you're going to be pretty upset. All right, I'm going to set the camera down to finish prying this off. All right, so we just finished prying this off of here. Uh, always good to take a visual inspection of the teeth on it. Make sure none are bent, uh, broke, missing, full of rust, mud, anything like that. Um, as you can see... Uh, we live in the northeast, so everything here gets pretty rusty. But we might clean that up a little bit before we put it back on. But otherwise, uh, about time to pull the hub out. Yes. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to pull this hub out. We got the toner ring and the uh, nut on the back of this off already. So this is our uh, hub puller. Put all three of these lug nuts on. You want to make sure they're snug. And... 
make sure you eat your Wheaties in the morning before you start this. Because right after I tighten these up, we're going to slide hammer this off about 8,563 times. And uh, then that should come off. And then we'll move on to the next step. There you go. About a million of those later. And the hub part's out. <laughs> All right, so we got our snap ring here now that that hub's out. That's why I said we grab a couple pairs of snap ring pliers. Uh, last time I did one of these, the uh, pliers I had, they weren't uh, quite the right size. So here we got our snap ring pliers. You're going to squeeze on that snap ring some. Oh, try and get something behind it. It didn't quite go as planned. But if you get that squeezed in, sometimes it takes a few tries. All right, there we go. They're walking that snap ring out. Sometimes these are a real pain. All right, now our snap ring's out. Uh, this one's in good shape. We can still reuse it. That's to the side, and uh, next we're gonna be pulling this hub right out of this front side here. Well, there's half of it, but that was easy. But uh, the rest of it, including the race, all has to come out of this front side. So we'll get mocked up, and uh, I'm gonna show you that. All right, so we've got a bunch of parts and pieces out of our uh, on-car uh, wheel bearing puller or press whatever you want to call it so we got an adapter on the back uh that's obviously uh, about the size of the race it's going to push that whole race out uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get it mocked up through the front here put this spacer on to uh catch this hole here so that bearing will slide out the front and this is going to with this nut on the back we tighten it down it's going to literally pull the uh whole bearing right through the back side out to the front and that's going to be the removal of the entire old bearing Go ahead. All right, so uh, we got that adapter pulled out. We got uh, this thing situated again. We got the nut on the back, wrench on the back. We're gonna finish pulling this through. Uh, now that we got enough thread, we didn't need that other uh, spacer. There it is, whole bearing. Oh. All right, so we got a bearing here. Uh, I just took it out of the freezer. A uh, little trick of the trade. I put these in the freezer before I Go to press them in, um, shrinks them a little bit, not enough to make them fall right in, but an old timer told me that one time and never forgot it, seemed to help out. So we're gonna put that in. We got a little lube here, we're gonna put a little lube in. Uh, a little goes a long way, it'll help quite a bit. Spanning started. All right, get all of our tooling here. Adapter on the rear. And basically what's going to happen, if you get this all lined up, is uh, running this in, basically you're tightening, tightening the bolt on the front here and the nut on the back, and that's just going to suck this whole bearing right into the uh, hub. Alright, so we're all uh, lined up here. We have a bit bigger space around the front to push it in. Uh, after I get it pretty much recessed in, we'll put another one on and finish pushing it in to get the snap ring in. But for now, we're all lined up, and like I said, we're going to tighten this up. It's going to suck this bearing right in. Hardest part is uh, trying to put it in straight at first. After it starts walking in, it will walk itself straight. But, yeah, here we go. All right, that's all the way into our tool, so we'll back out. All right. Like I said... We're gonna have to grab another one to run this in the rest of the way. As you can see, it's in flush right now. It's gotta go in a little further so we can get that snap ring in. So I don't know, maybe another between an eighth or a quarter inch or so. Uh, we'll get that rigged up and go from there. All right, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna get this uh, till it's all the way in. We'll get that snap ring in. Should be bottomed out there. All right, there's that. Take a look, zoom in here. You're gonna see the slot for the snap ring right here in front of my tip of my finger. Uh, that's where we're gonna get that snap ring placed. That's good. All right, so got our hub started. Bearings in, snap rings in. Got our hub started here. Uh, what we're gonna do to suck this in is uh, we can't use the same press we've been using the whole time because 
Well, this has the stud through the center of it. Uh, it's because it's a front wheel drive vehicle and this is a rear wheel bearing. Typically, they got a CV axle that goes through and that press will press the hub right on too. But what we're gonna do in this instance is we're gonna use the nut, suck it in some. We get that nut on there. And that has a flat washer on it on the bottom side of the nut that does spin freely of the nut. So that's gonna allow it to uh, suck in most of the way. And we'll back the nut back off, put our uh, toner ring on it, finish sucking it in, and we'll torque it. All right, so we've got our uh, nut and our toner ring on the back here. Uh, I've got a pry bar through the studs in the front. I'll show you. Just to hold it. And we're gonna go ahead and torque this thing uh, to the factory torque spec of 214 foot pounds. So yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt doing it at this angle. All right, as I said, uh, we're all torqued on the backside. If this had a hole in it, we wouldn't have had to uh, suck the whole thing together with the nut on the back of it. But being as it was uh, a rear or a rear wheel bearing on the front wheel drive vehicle, that's where we're at. So once again, it doesn't hurt to look over all of your brake springs and your uh, shoes, all of your liners. Make sure you don't have anything leaking from the wheel cylinder. Uh, clean everything up. Uh, if your brakes need adjustment, it doesn't hurt to adjust them now. Now's a great time to do so. And put your drum back on and your wheel back on. Go for a test drive. Make sure you have no ABS codes or any other issues like that. And that should conclude your wheel bearing. I suppose one last thing before we wrap up, uh, I should, uh, let you know why I chose to change this bearing on the car instead of removing the whole knuckle. Well, the reason for that is because there's a bolt way up here. There's a bunch of suspension parts in the back here, a shock. Uh, pretty much everything about this is uh, pretty rusty. And trying to be in the business of trying to save people some money, I didn't want to have to uh, try and pull this off with almost 200,000 miles on it, living in the Northeast its whole life and has uh, quite a bit of rust on it. Basically, I was trying to get them out of here with just a set of bearings instead of having to put a bunch of other uh, money and parts into it and possibly an alignment afterwards. So, like I said, it's starting to get pretty rusty under here, and it just uh, seemed to me like this was the easier, uh, better way. Not necessarily the cheaper way, I guess. Well, they definitely saved money by doing it this way, but I don't know. I'm not trying to rip anybody off. That's all I'm trying to say. Anyways, thanks, and uh, see you on the next one.